Hi there, this is Product Manager Martin Brennan and welcome to this quick short tutorial on performance replacement using BCC10 in Media Composer. Today we're going to be fixing a common acting problem where actors flick their eyes towards the camera. Now most of the time looking right at the camera unintentionally is a big acting faux pas, but sometimes we miss it in production and need to fix it afterwards. So the problem with this is eyes are very expressive and the audience always goes directly for them when viewing a performance. So replacing them has to be very accurate, even for these tiny quick movements. So this is where the Mocha Pixel Chooser will come in. Now we've already done this tutorial using After Effects and Mocha AE, so you can go and check that one out as well. But this time we're gonna be focusing on Avid Media Composer and BCC10 from Boris FX. Okay, so here we are inside Avid Media Composer and what we're going to do here is replace this little problem of his eyes flicking towards the camera around here. So what we're going to do is track the eyes, mask them out, and then insert a frozen frame of the eyes back into the sequence. The movement is small enough that a frozen frame can be warped into position without looking odd, even when he moves. So to do this, what we're going to do is apply a BCC composite effect to the eyes and use the BCC10 Mocha Pixel Chooser to mask the eye area. And then once we have the mask area, we're going to use the tracking data from Mocha to corner pin a frozen frame into position. And there's a number of ways we can do this, and I'll show you one method using BCC plugins. So let's first of all edit out the look point. So at the moment he's looking right at the camera, so I just need to come back in the timeline till he's looking away again. And it looks like it's about frame 80. So I'm going to add an edit point there into my shot. And I'm also going to come over here and look on the other side. And you can see he's nodding his head there. So about frame 86 is where I want to edit that point out. So now I've isolated the edit where he's looking at the camera. Now, the next thing I want to do is have a separate track for where the freeze frame is going to apply. So I'm going to create a new video track. And I'm going to take this sequence and move it up to V2 because when I apply the corner pin effect later it's going to apply to the layer below. So I'm just going to copy this segment, drag it down to V2 and paste that back into position. Helps if I paste out the playhead. Let's go back to the playhead there and make sure we paste into position. Okay so now we have duplicated our segment down onto V1. So this is exactly the same as V2. And we're going to freeze this frame later. So let's not worry about this one at the moment. So let's now go ahead and mask out our eyes. So I'm gonna click on my sequence on the V2 track. And I'm gonna come over to BCC key and blend and choose BCC composite. Now, I could also use just the straight BCC Pixel Chooser, but I like the flexibility of the BCC Composite plugin. So I'm just going to drag that on to my timeline there, straight onto that segment. And let's switch into our effects mode up here. So here's our BCC Composite section. So now the first thing I want to do is change the default from hard light back to normal so it looks the same again. And I'm going to come down to Pixel Chooser where it says Pixel Chooser Mocha Off. So this is specifically BCC10 and I'm going to click on Launch Mocha. So at the moment it's telling me the host is not set to the full resolution so we want to make sure it is. So let's come down to our host resolution settings and now we're back to full resolution and we'll click on Launch Mocha again. So this loads up the segment of time that we've edited into the sequence. So you can see it's quite a short sequence, but there is a lot of subtle motion going on. So we're going to go ahead now and mask out these eyes inside the Mocha Pixel Chooser. So for those that aren't familiar with the Mocha process, it's very straightforward. Mocha works by tracking planes in the scene, and we do this by drawing shapes around the objects we want to track. So I'm going to come up here to my X-Blind tool, which is like a pen tool. And we're going to come around here and draw around the eyes. So I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to hold down the Z key and zoom in a little bit and pan over using the X key. And I'm going to draw my X blind shape around his eyes. Now I'm very importantly covering further around his eye than the actual eyeball. Because when you move your eyes, 
The skin under the eyes and the skin above the eyes also move subtly as well. So we want to make sure we're masking not just the eye movement, but the muscle and skin movement around it. Now I'm going to right click this tangent and pull it in. And this is going to smooth all the points at once. If you just want to smooth one tangent, you can left click a tangent and just smooth that corner. But here I want to do them all at once. So I'm just going to right click and pull it in like that. Now, I also want to mask the other eye on the same layer. Here we can see we've got layer one. So I'm going to come back up and we've got X-Blind and then add X-Blind to layer. So let's click on that one. And I'm going to draw another layer around this eye. So let's just drag that the same way. So now we have two splines on the same layer. So we can check how that mask looks by coming up to this show layer mats and we can see that is covering his eyes quite nicely. So let's just turn that off. I might just drag these points down a little bit so that we're covering all of that muscle area under the eye. And you can see I'm avoiding the bridge of his nose just in case the nose covers the eye when he moves. So what we're gonna do now is track his face in perspective. So I'm gonna click on the perspective option and perspective just means how the plane is turning in space. We could leave it on shear, which is like when the face skews a little bit, but to be safe, let's track in perspective as well. And I've set my minimum percentage of pixels to 90. This comes in by default for certain shapes. So the bigger the shape is on the screen, the smaller this value will be just for performance. But you want a high value in here for accuracy. Okay, so now very importantly, I'm going to name my layer. Let's just call this eye mask. And now we're ready to track. So we come over here to the track button. Now you can either track by going to the next frame, so frame at a time. And for a shot like this, we could probably just use frame by frame, or we can just press the track forwards and that will track all the frames. So you can see what's going on here. As his eyes move, you can see those subtle movements of the muscles and the skin and the mask is moving along to capture that motion. So now we have the mask track, we're ready to bring it back into Avid. But first of all, I also want to export out the tracking data. And there's a couple of things that I want to do here. First of all, I'm going to zoom out a little bit so I can see the whole frame. And I'm going to come up to this thing called the planar surface. So let's just turn that on. So you can see when I turn that on, a little blue square is now around his eyeball. So if I drag, you can see that square moves along with his face. So this square is what is going to drive our corner pin back in Media Composer. So first of all, I want to make this surface the same size as the frame because I want it to drive that frozen frame to freeze his eyes into position. So to do this, we're going to come over to the Align Surface tool. So we're going to click on that. And you can see now that my surface corners are hitting the edges of the dimensions of our footage. So now when I drag the timeline, you can see that surface is moving around erratically and matching to his face. So this is gonna be very important when we warp our frozen frame later. So now that we've set the aligned surface into place, I'm gonna come over here and click on export tracking data. And we're gonna to go to Boris FX BCC corner pin. And we also have the option of exporting just a transform. But here I'm going to choose the corner pin. So we're going to save that to file. And we're just going to call this eye mask. Save that. So now we have that corner pin data saved. And now we can go ahead and close up the pixel chooser. And the mask is going to apply back onto our timeline. So let's close it up and click save. Now at the moment you're not going to see anything because the V1 below our V2 is exactly the same segment. So if I delete V1, you're gonna see the black holes where our mask from the composite plugin has been placed. So let's just undo that. So now we wanna work on doing our freeze frame and our corner pin on V1 so it shows through on the mask correctly. So I'm gonna apply the corner pin first to make sure it warps correctly with the shot. So to do this, we'll go back over to our effects and we're gonna to go to match move in BCC match move and choose BCC corner pin. And I'm gonna drag that down to my V1 segment. 
So you can immediately see that mat now through the V2 where it's cutting a hole through to the bottom layer. And let's go ahead and view V1. So right now we've got our corner pin applied in the shot. So I'm going to go over to my effects panel again. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to say, let's select the right layer first, V1. And under BCC corner pin, we're going to choose background, none, because we don't need a background for this layer. And we're going to say corner pin source, the filter layer, so that we're getting the V1 source. Next, we're going to come down to the render type and just choose corner pin only, so that we've just got the corner pin, not any background. And finally, we're going to apply that motion data that we tracked from Mocha. So we're going to come down to the bottom here and choose the motion tracker twirl down here. And underneath the motion tracker, we've got tracker data import export. So let's select that and choose load. And then we can go ahead and choose our area. So we've got our iMask file that we saved before. And that's going to apply our corner pin data to the shot. So you can see it's warping here now. If I scrub the timeline, you can see that corner pin is now warping the shot correctly. So finally, what we need to do is apply the freeze frame to this layer so that we're not seeing the eye movement in V1. Now, there's a number of ways you could do this. You could take this layer and render out a freeze frame segment straight from the Avid tools. But I'm feeling lazy, so I'm just going to nest a freeze frame using the time tools in the BCC10 plugins. So first of all, I'm just going to double click on my V1, so I open up the nesting. And on this segment, I'm going to come down to BCC time and choose BCC velocity remap. So let's just drag that here. And in this tool, I'm going to come down into BCC velocity remap. And under velocity, I'm going to change the velocity parameter to zero. So once we have it set to zero, it's going to freeze on the very first frame of this segment. And now we've got a single frozen frame over those five frames doing exactly the same thing. So now we've got a corner pinned frozen frame ready to sit behind our V2 layer. So now if we switch back to viewing V2, you're going to see now that the alpha is cut through to that corner pinned frozen frame, and now it's warping and matching so that it fits the freeze frame correctly into our entire sequence. So now let's go ahead and render our effect and we can play back the sequence to see it completely. So here we have the final result. Here's the original shot, I'll just play that back. So we can see here he's still looking at the frames. And now let's look at the final result over in our master here. So coming along and no more staring at the camera. And it's playing back fine. So that was a quick example of how to do a performance replacement using Avid Media Composer and the BCC10 tools. If you've got any questions, please do go to the website at borisfx.com or check out the Facebook page at facebook.com slash This has been Mocha Product Manager Martin Brennan and thanks for watching.